and welcome to HealthyHouseplants.com, where we teach you all about gardening in the great indoors. If you'd like to support our show, please use our Amazon affiliate link below. Today I'm going to be talking about moss poles for houseplants, what they're for and how to use them. And here is one here and it's installed in this Monstera. And then here's another one that I am going to be putting in um, a Monstera adonsonii uh, in, an, in an upcoming video as well. Um, these were came from this particular um, brand that they come that this pack has two 25 inches. There's other ones that have that are taller, um, probably a few that are smaller as well. Uh, but for a lot of purposes, at least the 25 inch you're going to want to get. You can have them bent. You can have them, you can also straighten them out. So however, that's what I did with this one. However, whatever works for you. Okay, so you can see this is a moss pole. It has sphagnum moss on it, tied onto it. You can also make your own, which I have done. I may do a video in the future about making your own as well, because uh, that is also a possibility. So these are pretty well constructed though, so I really like them. And they, they do, um, uh, as I mentioned, you can go ahead and continue. They do bend into different shapes. I'm gonna leave it at that point right now until I get it into that um, Monstera adonsonii. Okay, so the moss pole, it's a cylindrical length of sturdy material, as you're seeing, wrapped with either coconut core or sphagnum moss, and this one is a sphagnum moss one. The pole staked into the soil, in, so you there's a stake at the end, as you see, and it's put into the soil like I did with this one. And so uh, what, what you do that for is so that then the plant can grow up onto the moss pole, onto this pole, as many plants do in their natural habitats, like the monsteras, they do that in their natural habitats. They grow vertically. A lot of times they're on the jungle floor. They grow up, up, up into the jungle, up into the trees, uh, using supports, not moss poles, but the plants within that are in the jungle. And so they will wrap themselves up and they go up to get sunlight, to get more sunlight. So this is a way of becoming, like I always talk about, mother or father nature and providing your different plants that like to climb with something to climb on. So that's what these are for. At the same time, you can moisten them, which I've done this one. You may see looks a little moister than this one because I have sprayed, I did spray with a fine mist of water onto the moss pole. And you want to, you do want to keep them moist after you've installed them uh, for the plant, uh, especially the monsteras because they're using aerial roots, these aerial roots. And I have a video, I actually just finished the video on the aerial roots and what to do with them they and you'll see them wrapped around the moss pole those airy roots will absorb moisture so they're going to absorb moisture from the moss pole so the different reasons for the moss pole i've already mentioned uh, you are simulating their natural environment providing them support for growing upwards like they like to do. It will also keep the plants upright. So what I did is I used this moss pole and I attached some the also the stems to it so that the, the leaves would be upwards rather than hanging down, which monsteras and certain plants will tend to do if they don't have some sort of a support. It also helps the plants produce stronger leaves because they are growing like they do grow in their natural habitat. It also prevents the the plants from sagging sideways or just fall, like I said, drooping over and stuff like that. So using a moss pole will promote climbing plants to grow larger, healthier leaves as well as support the plant as it grows upwards as mentioned. Aerial roots, like I showed you, attach themselves onto the moss pole as the plant grows to anchor the plant. Plants can also be trained to attach to the pole using ties or strings, or better, uh, this is green garden tape, which will stretch with the plant as it grows, because you have to be really careful, and I have a video on this. Uh, we'll link everything I'm mentioning here below as well, uh, but I have a video on how string, stuff like that can, will, will can girdle the plant, which means it can, it will work its way into the stem, into the trunk, and it will cut off 
the phloem and xylem, which is the nutrient and water absorption of the plant. So you have to be careful. So when you're, it's recommended that you do tie with string, etc. I would suggest using the green garden tape. It's very inexpensive. I'll put a link for, for that as well. And I do have a video on, on this as well. So uh, it's much safer option for attaching. Okay, so the keeping the moss pole, as I mentioned, moist helps tremendously in mimicking the forest, uh, the, 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 the jungle, a lot of times the jungle floor uh, where it is, they naturally are growing. So uh, that is a good thing to do. As I mentioned, when you do moisten it, moisten it with a fine mist. Try not to, you know, do like a, you, you could do it it's better to do the fine mist because you don't want you don't want to knock off parts of the sphagnum moss if you're really hitting it with a lot of water before you plant you can also soak it and that'll make it nice and moist and keep it moisture too from the get-go so that's another option as well or if you don't and you just want to spray it once it's up that's fine too the moss isn't really thick on there so uh, you can pretty much soak it pretty good with a fine mist okay so the plants that need a moss pole for support or really like a moss pole for support, those include Monstera adansonii, as mentioned, Monstera deliciosa, as you're seeing here, Philodendron also like it, and Pothos. So those are some plants that really, really like these moss poles, moss poles to grow on. And when you grow, especially like the Philodendron and the Pothos this way, it creates a different look when you, uh, when you grow the plant that way. Um, the uh, showing a photo here of um, one I'm not sure which I'll be putting here, philodendron or pothos, but, or both, but you can see a picture here of um, the, uh, the philodendron and or the pothos. So I'm not sure which ones I have pictures of, but the um, growing on the moss pole. And you can see the different look that it gives, right? So it's rather than draping, it is, it makes a really nice focal point growing up onto that moss pole and really filling the moss pole in. So really nice way to display uh, the vining plants like philodendron and pothos as well. So as mentioned, one of the reasons for the moss poles is so plants can get more light. So even with the philodendron and the, po and the pothos and, and the monsteras as well, they are going to be getting more light as they grow upwards, uh, upwards because plants uh, tend to get more light doing that. And of course, it's gonna depend where you have your light situated in your house. Uh, if it's near a window or if you have some full spectrum lighting on the plant, you would wanna put it up above and then the plant, the leaves will grow up and grow towards it and grow bigger that way. Moss poles generally last four to six years. Um, they're, this has, they have pretty durable uh, materials if they're, if they're put together fairly well. The uh, coconut core ones, um, will last even longer because they're more fibrous. I have a video on coconut core and it talks about the, the, the benefits of it. So that's another thing to keep in mind. If you're making one, you might want to consider doing with coconut core, although coconut core is a little bit more difficult because a lot of times it comes in uh, more of a, uh, once you, it breaks down, it's more of a, it's, it's not uh, as um, stringy. It's more of a, kind of not a powdery, but it's not, it's a little harder to work with if you're gonna make your own. So if you buy one, probably a better idea with the coconut core one if, if you um, decide to use that. So you wanna add the moss pole to a potted plant when you're repotting generally, although you can add it afterwards if you need to. If you haven't done it and you wanna put one in, you simply install it by sticking it in with the uh, end there and put it where you wanna put it and then attach the leaves that you want to and get things growing that way. The, um, to how to keep the moss pole moist, so you, you are going to need to, especially if you're, dry, if you're in a dry climate, you are going to need to mist it on a regular basis. Uh, that could, depending on where you live, if you're in somewhere in Arizona, where it's like Arizona, where it's very dry, and I'm even in Southern California, where it will be dry a lot of times of the year, you're going to need to do it 
frequently. Uh, could be every other day, every day even, depending on the weather. So uh, keep that in mind as well. Humidifiers, some people do use humidifiers near their plants. The, humi the, the great news is if you do that, have a video on humidifier, using humidifier with your plants as well. If you do that, the spray is going to go right for that moss pole and totally keep that moss pole nice and moist for you. So that is something that your, especially your tropicals like your monsteras will absolutely love. So there you go on using moss poles, some trip, tips and tricks about that, what, why you would want to use one, how handy they are, and how easy they are to install as well. So that is that. Thank you for stopping by today. Please leave any comments about any indoor gardening tutorials you'd like to see. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And please check the bell if you'd like to be notified when new videos are released.